Hi everyone, welcome back to this episode of Strange Encounters Down Under. I'm Cheryl Gotchell. We've got Ben Hurl ben here with me. I nearly didn't get it right. As per usual. <laughs> yes. And tonight, this time, we've got a, uh, this episode, we've got a special guest, George Simpson, from down south, down south of Australia, um, uh, from uh, Victoria. Yes, uh, yeah. Welcome, George. Um, I've known George for, for for quite a few years now, and and yep. he is actually the very first uh, let's call it paranormal slash UFO researcher that I ever met in person. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So I, I contacted you, and I came down to one of your meetings that you used to have down there at the um, at the Chelsea Caravan Park. Yep. And uh, I came down to Melbourne, and I and that was my first foray into into the uh, the world of the strange and the unusual. Right. And uh, George has been, for those of you who, who may not know George, he's been involved in the UFO field uh, primarily for a very, very long time and has been a very dedicated member of uh, the original View Force that was here in Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, View Force operated from the mid to late 50s right through until the early 2000s. Yep. And George held various positions within that group at that time. And then with the demise of, of U-Force, he became active in a UFORN, which was more of a nationwide approach to, to the UFO topic. And he was active in, in that for many years as well. And he's been, he's, he's basically seen a lot of pretty much everything around UFOs as it relates to us, uh, both him and me, who are both based in, in Victoria. So, but tonight we're having a bit of a chat about something slightly different. And George works in the photographic field, and he will explain it in much greater detail. But across his desk at work came a most unusual photograph that it's the strangest photo that I've ever seen, probably that all of us have ever seen. Mm. And we're going to share it with you tonight. And George is going to share the story about how he, how he came in possession of this photograph and the research that he's done. Mm -hmm. Welcome, George. Good. Yeah, good day. Hi. Yes, yeah, give us a bit of background about, about how you came across it, George, and then I'll pull up the um, the image and show people. Well, it just it just came along at work, um, where I work in a camera store, um, one of the Ted's camera stores. Everyone would have heard of Ted's cameras. Um, yep. They're all over, except for WA um, and the Northern Territory. Um, the only places we don't have Ted's cameras. I've been with Ted's cameras for nearly 20 years. Um, wow. About 10 years ago, I reckon this would have happened now, roughly 10 years ago, we, we used to have um, a scanning machine next to the kiosks where people put their memory cards in and get their digital photos, or they put their order in to get their photos printed. We, we did have a flatbed scanner there that people could just come in, scan their photos and put their order in themselves because scanning images is um, uh, it can be tricky, it can be a time-consuming thing. So we just thought, well, people can just scan images that they want to um, get printed. They can just order, order whatever they want and they can do it themselves. There's the scanner. You guys go for it. And it was always there. We've since taken it away now. If somebody wants, has a photo they want to get scanned, they bring it up to the lab and they, it's done in the lab for them by the lab staff. But it used to be something you just did yourself. Well, this lady came in one day when I wasn't there on my day off and did a whole lot of copy photos of her family photos to give to family members. And uh, she, she did a, a, she got a few things mucked up and got the, um, got the cropping incorrect on some of the photos. Well, she came in the next day when I was at work, she came in to pick up her photos. I handed them to her and she had a look at them. She said, oh, look, you've cut this guy's head off. You've cut this bit off. You've cut that bit off. Well, it wasn't us. She, she did the scanning and, she just didn't check the, the cropping before she put the, the order in. So I said, look, it's okay. Show me the ones that you've got. Give, give me all the ones that have mucked up 
and we'll just I'll, we'll put it back in and we'll redo it. I won't even charge you for the reprints. We'll just fix it for you, okay? All right. So she had all these photos and, uh, and so we rescanned some of them. And one of them, um, a lot of them were very small. They were from all different um, uh, eras. These photos were all from last century, the family photos she had all different sizes, just pulled out of a photo album, all different sizes. And this particular photo um, was a very small, dark photo. It was no bigger than a business card. That's mm. all we had, mm. a business card sized image. And it was really dark. Um, and, um, and, and I just saw this photo of this bloke standing in front of the house, this photo. Of the, and um, so I said, right, well, <coughs> excuse me, there... Um, We'll just redo that and we'll brighten it up this time because it was a bit too dark. And she said, yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, we'll brighten it up. And um, this is what we did. And um, when it was printed, I, I was, we were going through them and I was showing her that all, we'd corrected all the cropping. And I said to her, oh, um, you know, what? Uh, who's that guy in the photo? And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, she didn't know. She said, we don't know who he is. And I said, well, hang on, um, what, what do you mean? We don't. I said, what do you mean we don't know? She said, yeah, well, well um, she said, the guy in the photo was her husband who had been now, he'd been long dead. He died of cancer um, 15 months after they got married. And, um, and she was very emotional too then at that point because she, you know, she really loved this guy and um, she still missed him even today. She still misses him. So, you know, I did a, a big, large, I did a, um, an A4 size print of it for her because it was only the size of a business card. So I blew it up to A4 and, and gave it to her because, you know, she was so emotionally attached to it. And I was just intrigued that there was this guy in the dark standing in there in the, behind him and she didn't know who it was. She said, we've asked everyone in the family, nobody knows who he is. Like he, he's got a kind of a familiar look but um, they, they have no idea who he was. Now, the, the, the guy, the main subject in the photo is the lady's husband. He's wearing a white shirt. He's got something, a strap over his shoulder. I think it's a camera case over his shoulder. And anyway, this picture um, is just an ordinary photo, except there's this very strange dark figure standing just behind him to the side in the shade and covered in, in leaves, but the leaves are all around his, his neck. He doesn't appear to have any shoulders or any arms. Uh, you can see his feet down the bottom and, and he's got a kind of a smile on his face and it's just weird. It's just a very weird photo and they don't know who he was. How about but, I bring it up and you can have yeah. people and you can um, uh, talk about it? Now, is it a ghost photo? I don't know. We don't know what it is. Where are we? Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the big. Oops. Now it's going to play out. Oh, here we are. There we okay. go. Oh, no. Right. That one, go. that, yeah, that's the lightened up one there, I think. Yeah. And so you this, can was, see, this was the one that you first got. Yeah, that little one there. Yeah. It was a small picture and it was all dark and I didn't even notice there was two people in the photo. Mm. If you look carefully, there's two people in the photo. There's a bloke wearing a black hat and dark sunglasses, who I didn't even see at first up. And then we lightened it up, and there you can see there's two, two men in the photo. Now, mm. also, the other thing that the lady, the lady, her name was Sylvia. I can't remember the surname. Anyway, her name was Sylvia. Um, and at the time when they were married, his name was Cyril Wall. So she was once Sylvia Wall was her name, W-A-L-L, -L, Wall. But that guy, Cyril, in the photo, she said he was a very, um, very devout man. I think a devout Catholic or he was very, um, a very religious guy. She said he, he wouldn't lie to me. He, he wasn't making anything up. He swore that he was alone when the photo was taken. Um, That's incredible. I, and it was somewhere in Melbourne. I don't know where. Some suburb in Melbourne. Um, it's just Is a weatherboard house. It's the 1950s. It sort of looks like that era. 
it does look like the 50s or the early 60s. Yeah, yeah. Around that era, look at the yeah. size of the tie and... Um, yeah, the clothing style. Mm. See the strap over his shoulder? Like he yeah. could be wearing a gun, but it's... I think it's a <laughs> camera case or something. Yeah, it could but be binoculars or something, yeah. I don't know who took the photo. She, the wife wasn't there when the photo was taken. It was taken before she met him. Mm. So she was saying this photo was taken before, but she didn't care. She had no interest in the guy standing in the dark at all. She didn't care about that. She just wanted the photo of her husband. The, the interesting thing, George, you know? is you can't see the gentleman wearing the hat. You can't see his arm. Like it's, it's like his, arms. Yeah. Body, his body finishes where the arm should be. Where, where his shoulders might be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's like he could just have his arms behind his back. Good. You know? And he's yep. half obscured by the leaves. He's sort of half standing behind the leaves. They're kind yep. of around around his chin and around his neck. Mm. There's a tint uh, in his glasses, though. Like there's a yeah. like his glasses have got a, like a, a light reflection on on the um, on the on, on our right hand side. Yeah, well, if you zoom right in on it, mm. it gets even more peculiar. Mm. Yeah, because right. the glasses don't have a defined edge around them. Yes. Oh and, no way! Yeah, and there's <laughs> there's no frame holding the two lenses together, and there's no frame going back to his ear. Wow. Well, not that yeah. I can see, and it's a very very high resolution scan. We didn't have a negative, so we just had the original print, which we scanned. But it's a really high resolution scan that we got. Yeah, it's crisp. You can see so that. You, you can blow it up. You can see the grain of film. It's so yeah. fine. I'll show that oh. photo so people can see what you're talking about. That's, yeah. That's a bit grainy. It's a little bit. Well, that's the grain of the film because we're yep. really blowing mm. it up. Yes. Um, and you can see the leaves around his chin and everything. Uh, and I don't know what that is. That looks like a reflection there on the, um, mm. on the, on the lens that you notice, Ben. Mm. Um, I can't work out what that is, whether it is a reflection or whether there's... Um, a leaf in the way or something. It wasn't dirt on the photo. That was in the image on the photo. Mm. So I don't know what it is. I don't know what sort of hat that is. But see, you can't see any wire or any frame going to his ear. Mm. Yeah. Um, That's very unusual. What about if I bring up the next one with the two of them together? Yeah. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, you can sort of see. You can almost see. You can Well, I can see his eyes, I think. I'm just... Looks yeah. like you can see eyes. That looks like you can see eyes behind those glasses in that particular image. Yeah, I don't know. It's freaky. Um, mm, now, it is Cyril, freaky. Cyril has a little dot inside his eye. But mm. I yes. Think that's just a bit of speck of uh, uh, just a fa uh, um, just a bit of dust might have been on the neck when the print was made originally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a little bit of dust in the windowsill there in the dark on the windowsill, <clears throat> and so that would just be dust on the negative. Yeah. when the original print was made. When yeah. I'm, There's when another I'm, speck in his hair, too, in Cyril's hair. Mm. When I'm looking at the fellow with the hat, um, the, the leaves that are down his side where his arm might ordinarily be, at first I was looking, but my eyes started to play tricks on me because the lighting on the leaves actually makes it look like there's a sleeve up this mm. close. Yeah, it does. Like his shoulder, like he's wearing a vest, a black yeah, vest. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, a vest. A black vest and a white shirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but where's the rest of the sleeve and the arm? And... Exactly, yeah. But, and he's, he's also got some sort of straight, like you can see his feet too in this photo. Yeah, yeah. That that foot looks very, his, um, what's that, his right foot, yeah. the one that, that one you can see the foot, those toes look pretty weird. That foot looks very just deformed and strange to me. Yeah. I don't know why. Is I don't know why it's so odd. Is it a shoe or a boot? It's, you know, it sort of bends up. The toes bend in an upward direction. And the, the toes don't look right. No. Because the big, the largest toe is furthest away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, they look kind of mangled, like mangled and, and, feet. And his other foot would have to be almost touching the, the, the back of the other gentleman's foot. Like there would only be... A short distance between them, you'd imagine. Well, if you look at Cyril's right foot mm. uh, and look just above the cuff, mm. there's two 
two little bo- little round spherical things. Yes. Which, mm. uh, which could be the side of the deformed other foot that's mm-hmm. behind the leg. It's mm. hard to say. It is. Mm. You can only speculate. I mean, but, yeah, it's weird. It's very weird. Very unusual. I just want to go back to the uh, the other one, this one here. Hmm. What, are you, what are your what's your instincts tell you about this, George? What do you, you know? I mean, you, you know, you heard the story. Hmm. You know that there was uh, no hmm. one else in the photo at the time. What do you think? Yeah, I, I can't. I don't know what to think. I just thought it was weird. Um, I mean, you could say that it's a, a ghost photo, but it might not be a ghost. Mm. Uh, Cyril said there was nobody with him at the time mm. when the photo was taken. So mm. it's just a to me, it's just a mystery. And now there is a if you look at that photo there, that's the whole photo. There's a kind of a, a, a smear of light, a yes, line of light going across the left to the bottom left there, just near their li- about thigh height, yeah, from the bush going towards them. Mm. And there's a little bit of light around Cyril's foot on the ground. Yes. And a little bit of light in front of the house on the over near the window. Yes. The lighter area. On the ground there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just below the plants under that, the weatherboards. That could just be the way the light's coming through the trees mm. in the garden. Would that imply that the sun is there? Do you reckon that's like a, a, a semi-lens flare? It could be something like that. I, I don't know what the camera was. It could have no. been a, a simple box brownie, you know, they yeah. had no, um, they had no coatings on the glass lenses on those old box box brownies. They were just a bit of glass shaped yeah. as a lens. They they weren't that sophisticated. I'm so curious to know what's hanging over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 binoculars come to mind for me because that or would be cam- that thin style strapping. Your camera, yeah, or a camera, a camera case maybe. Yeah. Um, or maybe a handgun. Maybe he was a detective and he's got a handgun. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah, he looks like a, a you know a fifties, sixties sort of um, you know homicide detective almost, doesn't he? Eh? Yeah. I, I, I never <laughs> asked the lady. I never asked her um, what he did for his work, what his job was, or anything. Yeah. I never the, asked her. The other thing I think we need to talk about is the fact that he. It's this is not some spectral style of image. This is a. Um, what looks like a solid gentleman, you know, we talk about ghosts in other episodes that we've done about solid, solid form materializations. And this is, <laughs> George has got a friend. Yeah. <laughs> and this, and this, this looks like a, um, you know, a real solid form. Yeah. 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 It's very, it does. Uh, it's the fa- the close up of the face and the smile on the guy's face intrigues me too. Now, when yeah. I, yeah, yeah. When this came in at the at the lab, um, the girl who was working on the lab who did the high resolution scan um, tried superimposing that guy's face over Cyril's face, and they match. They almost match. Yeah, I like, thought the smiles looked like they were a very a very similar style of, of facial expression. Very similar nose and mouth and everything. They look very very similar. Yeah, but uh, it, it's just the way the leaves are all around his his neck and everything mm. it's just weird i just it's straight his ear looks a bit odd too his ear looks kind of um like he's got a cauliflower ear or something yeah it does yeah it doesn't know, look, it's, <laughs> it's hard to hard to say what it is and his age he's almost hard to age in some ways like mm. he's got to be at least between 40 and 60 perhaps not i'm saying at the more perhaps the older end of the scale mm. um but he's he looks um it's he's kind of hard to age you couldn't say and back in that era too people looked older earlier yeah and i'm just wondering what era that hat comes from well that could be the 30s the 40s the 50s mm. they, were, they were wearing hats sort of those sort of federal style hats during the 30s 40s and 50s mm. yeah By the time you got to the 60s that sort of hat was kind of being left behind yeah i'm only guessing when i say it could be early 60s it could be 50s or 40s yeah, it could be easily I, be 40s too I, yeah yeah I, I have no idea yeah yeah it's a and uh is it like a, a maple tree like you know looking at those leaves it looks like a, a maple tree perhaps not that that's probably that important to to the thing but it looks like it's they look like maple leaves yeah they're maple leaves aren't they mm. oh yeah they could be yeah, yeah. I think yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, they look like a Canadian ma- maple leaf. Um, or, um, something like that, anyway. Very wouldn't be um, 
one of those other things that everybody's got those uh, you, I mean, you're looking at the expressions between the two. The two smiles are, are almost a mirror, mirror identical smiles, aren't they? Yeah. Um, did, did did Sylvia sort of say that it might have been a relative or something like that, or you know, like well, a great grandpa or something? Or well, that's a lot of people think they might have been, it might have been an ancestor of his, like a previous a father or grandfather or great a great grandfather. She said, "We don't know." She said, mm. "We've we've looked through the family." archives and everything and we there's nobody in in the family that we know of who looks anything like that guy we, we don't we don't recognize him she said we don't know who he is yeah that's, mm. yeah. So that's it's kind of interesting they don't know yeah i think you're right there ben the nose and the mouth and and you know around the cheekbones that looks very very yeah. similar yeah, there, there's a there's a similarity there, and that's what struck me when I first looked at the photo was the was the similarity of ex, of expression, mm. you know, mm. it, which mm. which is almost like someone says smile and you smile, and and people sort of smile in different ways, I suppose, but they they really are mirroring each other in their in that look, mm. um, and, and you know, and how far how far back is he? A, a foot, two feet back? No yeah, more than not. no more than that, would you say? Would you? Yeah, not no, yeah, that's right, pretty yeah. close, and. It, you can't see his chin because he's got all his leaves in front of his chin. Yeah. In front of his chest. So you can't really see much of him because of those leaves. Mm. Um, and head. if someone was going to have a photo taken with somebody else, you certainly wouldn't have it with the leaves around your head and in front of you like that. Yeah, and it's it's not a double exposure. Yeah, it's not. I, no, I've mucked around with photos and cameras all my life and done I've I've done deliberate double exposures as an experiment to see how things came out. And uh, you can always see bits of the other photo all the way through the photo. Ah. Mm. You see, you'll always get something that doesn't look like it should even be there because it's part of the other photo. Mm. There's nothing like that here. This is um, this is too good a hatch job for it to be. It's, it's not a, a random double exposure at all. It's no way. Mm. Mm. So if we said this was, you know, trying to pinpoint an era of say forties to fifties, which I'm looking at it more, that, that's where I, I tend to think it is in that forties to fifties, early fifties or something, yeah. early fifties or late forties, like after yeah. the war sort of, that's, that's what it sort of strikes me as. And mm. a lot of family photos from that, you don't get a lot of practical joking photos back in those days. You didn't have people doing, you know, these sort of, you know, photos back, they always more stood more formally in, in, in from those time periods. And it's hard to see someone saying, look, look, just for a lark, just stand in the leaves. It leaves where you Bill. Yeah. It just goes, just go stand in the, in the, in the leaves and we'll, we'll get this picture. It looks, you know, that, that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem logical to me from that time period. I've, I've never seen a, a practical joke photo from the forties. Maybe they're out there, but I've, and, I've not seen one. And, uh, and let's cut your arms off too. Yeah. <laughs> so you look yeah. funny in the photo. Yeah. yeah. Or it could be a cardboard cutout, you know. It doesn't look like it, not the way the light's hitting it everywhere. But yeah. if that's a manifestation from the unseen realms, it's the best one that I've ever seen. Absolutely. It's, just, it's the weirdest thing I've seen. Yeah. And, um, but the, my greatest surprise was her attitude about it. Oh, yeah, we know about him. He was in the photo. We don't know who he was. He doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Zero matters. <laughs> There's my husband. That matters. That's a great photo of my husband. Yeah. And I miss him. And, and that's what matters. Yeah. And I don't care about the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, was, but, yeah sorry. So I just have one quick question. Was she married to him when this photo was taken? Or was this a photo from before they were married? Yeah. The photo was before she met him. Uh, right. Gosh. And she met him after that and they got married and then he died of cancer. 15 months after they were married and she still misses him. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and they had she, they had a, a child. Um, so after he had died, the child, she was like a single mum, I guess. Mm. Um, and that's another reason she wanted a copy to give to the to his um, his offspring. Mm. Mm. So they knew what their father looked like. Is it is it interesting how these sorts of let's say it is a um, a, a photo from the unseen realms or a manifestation of the unseen realms, how easily, how subtle it is and how easily it can be looked over. You know, like she didn't want to know about it. Like, 
I wonder how many other people have got photos that they really don't care what else is in there. I just want to see that part of my photo. Yeah, yeah, it, that's, yeah. Exactly. And today you could digitally cut him out and get rid of the other guy. Yeah, you know, right. you know, with all the apps and the stuff you see now and you know, erasing erasing people in photos, that could be done in today's age, mm, you know, and you'd have yeah. In the original little dark copy, I didn't even see him. Yeah. It's just a dark shadow. I didn't even see there was That's anybody good. in there. It wasn't until we brightened it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah, at first I didn't even. I just thought there's a guy standing in front yeah. of his house. Yeah. And when we made it larger and brightened it up, then I noticed the other person. Yeah, you can't and miss so, it. Well, she knew it was there. They'd noticed it. Yeah. The family knew about it, but they didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> some, some weird, dark, shadowy figure hanging around in the background. Oh, so what? <laughs> well, so what? <laughs> what do you mean? So what? Yeah, I mean, you so, look at the, you look at that light around here, around uh, you know the gentleman's, the, you know the the man who's meant to be in the photo's feet. Like it, it definitely that grass is fairly fairly consistently across, even where it gets a little darker under the trees. Hmm. There is de- that light that that there's almost like there is a light glow even between his feet. Um, and you know, and across to the back to the to the house there too. It's almost. It, it almost adds to the adds to the intrigue of it. I think. Well, it's, I think it's just the sun coming through the tree. You know, mm. I think. Yeah. You know, they're standing. Oh the yeah, yeah. Well, it could be. It, yeah, I suppose that's true. If it, yeah, the, the mottled mottled light. If we're looking at the photo, that if we were standing in front of these guys and we were taking the photo, the yeah. sun is behind us and up up above us yeah. and behind us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to estimate a time of day, isn't it? Mm. Um, actually, that that would also explain the shirt, the curve in that sort of light beam going across the middle of the photo, is consistent with a, a strong sunbeam yeah. artifact in a cheap lens. Mm. You know, yeah, wow, it sort of looks like that. I find so, that very, very intriguing. It's a very mm. interesting photo, especially when no, we don't know who he is, and we don't care who he is. We don't know. He doesn't matter. <laughs> He doesn't matter, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that smile on his face, though, you know, just almost a cheeky, ah, oh, I'm here, you know. You weren't expecting this, were you? It'd be interesting to know the ad- – it would be good to know the address where, where the picture was taken because, you know, if you were really going to get into it, you could, you know, then say look at maybe previous owners of the house and maybe try and find photos of them and then you might go, that's the guy, that's the guy. <laughs> it could be anyway. The funny thing is that – it's, it is a different window, but there's a photo of me and my wife in a front yard, um, and it looks like the same front yard in the photo. It's mm. my sister's house in Bentley mm. years ago. Um, and we, it's, But there'd be dozens of houses, at the trees, mm. and that sort of old house that would look the same. Mm. It's not the same house, but yeah. um, there's a photo of me and my wife standing there, and it looks similar to this. Yeah. yeah. Know, but we're not. There's nobody hiding in the shadows or hiding half between, half behind the leaves. That's not now, yeah. photo. Yes, that's that's the odd thing. There's there's a, a list of odd things about this photo that don't add up for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's not a photo that you see around around you know the the traps, is it? You know, like it's it's mm. it's a fairly unknown picture. Mm. Well, it's never been published. You know, no. Way. It's been put online a couple of times, and I've showed it to a few people. And uh, yeah, I, 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 look, I, it never ended up in the ufology magazine, I don't think. And no, I, no. I, I said to Sylvia, um, I hope you don't mind if I talk about this to people or show it to people, or if I give a talk, I could um, show it to people. And they didn't mind. And she didn't mind at all. <laughs> <laughs> a little budgie's come to, to join us. <laughs> hey, Freddie. What's, what's the bird's name? Fred. Fred. What are Freddy. you? Fred? What He's are named you? after Freddie Mercury. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the kids taught him to say, he talks. Yeah. And the kids taught him to say, um, I love to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop sharing this now so we can come back and have a chat to you. Hang okay, on. cool. We can All see right. we can see Freddie better now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to close up with Freddie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there he is. Oh, Freddie. 
on camera. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's the yeah. go, eh? Isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he lovely? He doesn't oh, like being picked up, though. No. He doesn't like that. Do you... Sorry, Fred. He doesn't like that. He, he'll sit on your shoulder and say, "How you doing, Budgie?" <laughs> he calls us Budgie. How you doing, Budgie? <laughs> How you doing, Budgie? How you I doing? Have another question for you, George. Yeah. Working, working in with in the camera store and and with the you know developing photos over the years, have you ever seen oh. any other strange images show up on photos? No. You haven't. No. What about, what about UFOs? No. Nothing. No. No. Um, there have been. Uh, oh. That's a good question, Cheryl. Because I, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. You know? No, I'm thinking, oh, he must have dozens of them. Look, no, no, no. When I, when I was with Viewforce, um, they gave me a whole lot of these old photos um, that people had said, "Oh, I think I've got a UFO," and they they weren't. Um, and we worked out what they were, actually were, but that that's never happened while I've been at Ted's. Um, but the I've seen photos that have gone through photo labs, and people have wondered if they had a UFO or not. And there was something wrong with the camera, or something wrong with the film, or something, and you get unusual effects. Like quite often with films, at the end of the film, they used to staple the customer's name on on a piece of paper and staple it to the negative, mm. the processing, so they wouldn't um, forget whose neck or lose track of whose neck it was. Sometimes you could get a hole from a, a stapler, a, and it's been removed, but there's now a hole in the neck. And when you do a, a reprint from the neg, mm. you get a strange effect on the photo because the light's coming straight through a hole. And it looks like um, a, some sort of strange effect on the photo. But uh, uh, no, I, nobody's ever had any UFO photos um, come through the lab, no. The only mm -hmm. UFO photo that's come through the lab where I work is the, the Roy Manifold photo. Oh, really? Yeah, really? Because I've brought it along and uh, printed it and blown it up. And um, okay. it's a very, very good quality copy of the Roy Manifold photo. So for, for people who don't book. know what that is, can you have a quick chat about what that is? Explain yeah, it. Yeah. Look, um, yeah, it's just um on the day that Fred Valentich disappeared, the act at the actual time that he was flying towards Cape Otway where he was last known to be over land before he had that encounter. Um, this fellow Roy Manifold and his family were having a holiday down near Cape Otway, um, and they were just um, camping, and they had there were huts down there that people could just use. Um, I don't know what the setup was, but it was um, like it was crown land, but somebody had built these holiday huts that people could use. Anyway, they're probably they're probably two hundred dollars a night now, like bushwalkers <laughs> huts. That's if they're still there. Yeah. But anyway, um, they were staying in one of these huts and um, having their holidays down there. He, he's a plumber. Uh, so he works hard, you know, uh, through the week. And then he was uh, having a holiday break. It was in October. And uh, it was the 21st of October. And um, and the year? He, the people... And it was 1978. Yeah. Uh, 78, yep. And his son was only a little, like, 10 or 11-year-old kid then. Um, he now runs the family business because <laughs> uh, he's a plumber too. But um, he was just uh, running his little, motor, little mini bike around there. Not a good place, really, for that because they were on the edge of a cliff. Oh, no. <laughs> I wouldn't want my 10-year-old son to be riding a mini bike around on the edge of a cliff. Anyway, um, Roy uh, had some film in his camera and he, he's got a lot of photos that he's taken over the years. He loved taking photos of the sunsets, the different colours you get whenever you get the sunset. And so he photographed the sunset this particular night and he had six shots left on the film. And he had his camera was an Olympus, um, Olympus camera with a motor drive. You, they were one of the few film cameras back at that time where you could put a motor drive on the bottom of the camera. Mm -hmm. So you just press the button and it would automatically wind on for the next shot. And he, he was checking on his looking at his watch, timing 20 to 30 second intervals. <clears throat> and he just did the last six shots of the film. He was looking at his wrist, timing the, the second hand on his watch. He wasn't looking at the subject, which was the setting sun. He'd already set that on the camera. He'd set infinity focus. So he was just pressing the button every 20 seconds or so, 20 or 30 seconds. And he got those six shots. And the fifth one had this very strange object in it. 
but he didn't even know because he didn't see anything because he was looking at his watch. And it was about a month later after they'd got back from their holiday that he decided, oh, we better get that film developed. And he told his wife, Brenda, hey, when you do the shopping, will you take that film and drop it in? She said, yeah, no worries. He gave her the film. She did the weekly shopping. She dropped it in to get it developed. And when they got it back, they were looking through the photos at home. He saw that strange object in the photo and he thought, they've done something. They've made a mistake in the lab when they've developed this photo. They've damaged my negative. And he was a bit angry about it. He wanted to find out, what have they done? You know, they've damaged my negative and there's a strange <laughs> thing in the, in the photo. That shouldn't be there. It should be just a, the sky. There was nothing. He didn't see anything when he took the photo. And uh, so they've gone back to the lab. It was um, just the local shopping centre film lab, you know, the one-hour one hour photo shop. They used to be everywhere. Hmm. And um, they took it back and they had a look. They said, no, that's fine. Everything was good. There's, they looked at the negative and they said, there's nothing wrong with your negative. There's nothing wrong with the printing. There's something you've, ca you've captured. We don't know what it is. but and, and so they took it back. They were trying to get some kind of, uh, maybe get a free film or something from them. I don't know, but they were saying, you did something here. And they said, no, we didn't. So he he, he still wasn't satisfied with that. So he went to Kodak because um, it was Kodak Film. So he went to the Kodak Film headquarters, which was in Coburg. They're not there anymore, but um, it was a big lab. And he took the neg there and showed them. And he got their film experts to examine this negative under a microscope and uh, they were looking at the negative and they said, look, uh, there's nothing wrong with the emulsion. It's not a, not a developing fault. It's not a, a manufacturer's fault. You've got something there on the film, but we don't know what it is. Mm. Mm. Now I can put that on if you want to. Yeah. I've got a very good quality copy of it mm. that came from a reprint that um, John Pinkney did. Now, in his book, they got the colour wrong when they printed the book. It just, it's all orange. Yeah. But I've corrected it, and it's got a lot of colour, a lot of detail, and you can see the little blue sparkly bits. Oh, okay. it's, it's had, like, little static electricity, blue, blue sparkles on one side of it. Very odd. Very strange photo. Let me, um, let me see. I can put that on... Um, I'll go back to here where you were, Cheryl. Yeah, you're still there. I'll find this other picture and I'll put it in here. I know I've got it. It would here. nearly have to be Australia's most famous UFO photo. Or one of the world's most one, famous. Or one of the world's most famous UFO photos right. on, on, a, on a day of high strangeness in, in October 1978 um, yep. down off the um, you know, Apollo Bay area down there. He was, um, that was an incredible photo. There mm. you go. Here it is. Um, Cheryl, you might be able to put this up in the yeah. background for everybody to see. I can see that one. Now, it's very, very, uh, it's a very grainy photo. It's. Um, Hold on. I'll just bring it up. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. It, there you go. You got the whole background there. Now, look at that. I use that as the background on my computer, actually. I've got all my <laughs> icons over it. That's my background photo on my computer. But mm. if you zoom in, look at it. Um, it is odd. Um, that's nearly all of the photo. They didn't get all of it in the book. But there, mm. if you look at that object there, I mean, if you if you can zoom in on that or blow that up or anything, you'll see, you can see the grain of the film in this photo because mm. it's a very, it must have been at least 800 ASA or something. It's a very, mm. very coarse grain photo. But those little blue sparkly things on the left-hand side of that object, um, they're not in the photo before or after. They're not in the sky. They're not behind it. They're associated with that object. Some mm -hmm. sort of electrical or yeah, you know, that kind, type of effect or plasma kind of like or multi yeah. sparkly things. There's even one in front of the, the dark area of the object. There's a little spot. That's one of those little blue spots. Um, I, I can't make it out. I, I, it's hard to work out what it is, and it's it's a very um, eccentric looking thing. It's 
it's not uh, it's not symmetrical. No. It doesn't have any geometrical symmetrical shape mm. to it. It's all sort of out of shape. And it, but the actual overall shape of the bottom of it, mm. interestingly, is the same shape as the object described by Travis Walton. Yes. And in his book, you know, when he was dropped off and he said it was like a dome on the bottom and there were windows around the top. Mm. Same shape, overall shape as the bottom of that picture. Mm. Um, it, does, it's, it does remind me of a spinning top, like, you know, yeah. that, that sort of shape. Yeah, but um, it's, it's got this weird lump on one side, doesn't it? So it, yeah. looks, it looks fairly solid because I'm trying to think of something that might, you know, um, look like that, like a swarm of something if it was closer mm. to the camera, but it just looks so solid. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's, it's it's very strange. Um, I'd love you, to see it in a, in action. I'd love to see it going across the sky. You know, are you uh, open to the? Are, are we open to the theory that 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 maybe it's it's appeared in our reality? So you know, rather than zooming into the picture, that maybe it's this is where it's actually you know come from another dimension, or this is the point where it's actually it's actually appeared, and it wasn't in the photographs before it, but. And it, and it might be something that escapes the human eye, even, because because he said he didn't he didn't see anything or hear anything or oh, well, well, anything at all. He, he didn't hear anything because it was it could have been at some distance. Yeah, he was looking at his watch and timing the intervals. Mm. So mm. he had the camera set on infinity. It did it wasn't an autofocus camera; it was a manually focused camera. Yeah. So you set it on infinity and forget about it. You don't have to worry. You know that everything's going to be in focus. Yeah. There's a bit of a lens flare um, yep. on the rocks there from the sun. Yeah. Pointing it straight at the sun. Yeah. Um, that object would be ba typically backlit because the sun is well behind it. Mm. It's in the foreground, closer, much closer to the camera mm. than the sun is. Uh, but getting these electrical blue sparky things in the sky, just it's got me intrigued. I've had reports from people when I was running the um, AU Fawn Victoria branch, there was somebody from Taralgon or somewhere who had the sighting uh, of a large flying disc that went across the across their yard near their house. And they said what intrigued them was that all around this object in the sky was like millions of little light, flat, like camera flashes going off, little mm -hmm. sparkly blue lights everywhere in the air, like the air was electrified is how they described it. Mm. And this is what I think we've captured in this image here. Yeah. Uh, and um, I've also had that sort of report from somebody else too. Now, that one was the lady, the one in Taralgon. Oh, yeah. There's another case that I investigated. Um, when my children were little, there's a kindergarten in the next street. Um, and we got to know a lot of the other families in the area because they're they had young kids too. You know, you get to know all the other parents. And one of these ladies in, in this kids' play group heard my wife mention to somebody that, that I was involved in UFO research because I was going to the UFO Research Society the few force meetings, right? It's way back then, uh, early 1990s, this was. And, uh, and she scoffed and laughed about, oh, yeah, that's, that's crazy stuff, all that UFO stuff, ha, ha, ha. Then she had a sighting. Uh, she lived in Edith Vale, which is the next big suburb. I'm in Chelsea. She was in Edith Vale. And one night she was doing the dishes in the kitchen and um, looking due south, she could see this object, some bright lights coming towards her, like from the Frankston direction, heading towards her sort of along, it's a beachside area. So you've got the bay would be on the right-hand side and the land is on the right, on the left. And so straight in front of her is all the houses, but this big bright light coming towards her in the sky. She called her husband's attention to it. Come over, come over, come over. And he, he wouldn't drag himself away from the TV. She was almost having kittens. So he came up and looked out the window. And so he watched it with her. They went out into the backyard and watched this thing go over. And it got bigger and bigger as it came towards them. And it was just your typical flying saucer, but a really big one. They said he'd blocked the sky out as it went over. It was that big. It blocked their whole view of the sky above them as it went over. Um, 
and as it was coming towards them, she was amazed at the fact that it had these really big lights, like one metre in diameter sort of thing, a whole row of them, really big lights coming towards her. But what he was interested in was the fact that all around it, there was these sparkly blue things, little blue sparkles all the way around it, uh, like in this photo. Mm. So that's, okay. that's an, another case where yeah. people reported this kind of strange, like, electrical effect around it that was visible. Yeah. And I think this is a good example of it in this photo. It certainly is. And, and the top, at the very top of the black object, there's quite a, a solid piece of it there too. Well, this image was taken to, um, was sent, Paul Norman sent a, a copy of it to Ground Saucer Watch, um, a guy called Bill Spaulding. I don't know if he's still with us, but back in the 80s, so that's we're going back 40 years, mm. Bill Spaulding um, used to do uh, computer analysis of UFO photos, and he'd always discover if there was a, a string, you know, um, a yep. string that shouldn't be there or, or a, something that's been, you know, any sort of trickery. Mm. Um, so... That's what he did, and he did edge enhancement and color contrasting and contour contrasting and all, contour enhancement and 3D, all kinds of things to try to see if there was anything more that you could learn from a 2D image uh, and, and see if there was anything untoward. And on this thing, he, he with this photo, his, his comment was, that looks like the top of it looks like it's a solid object, the top part of it. Mm. Um, it looks like like smoke or vapor on on that side. Yeah, on the right hand side. Yeah, uh, in a curve kind of thing, like something's rotating and creating, leaving something behind as it's going along, sort of mm. thing. Mm. Uh, but the top of it, he said, it looked like it would be. It must be really, really shiny on the top. So he said, look, it's a solid object. It's really shiny. Bit hard to determine how far it is from the camera, um, simply because. We don't have any kind of spatial, we can only sort of estimate. He thought it was probably within a, a half a mile. So they're talking, you know, about a kilometre, between one and two kilometres from the lens. It's a 50 millimetre lens on the camera, a normal standard 50 mil lens, which is roughly what the eye sees. Mm. The, the human eye is roughly a 50 millimetre setup like a camera. Yeah. Um, the focal length between the retina in your eye and your lens is around somewhere around 50 millimeters. Mm. And that's what uh, 50 to 55. And that this is going by that, this would be probably between one and two kilometers, but that's still only an estimate. Mm. But they said there's a solid object there. And, um, and Kodak wanted to keep the negative. They didn't, they said, you can leave it with us and we'll, we'll uh, give you a full report on it. And, uh, <laughs> Um, being a very astute businessman like he is, Roy said, uh, no, no, I'll, I'll take that with me now. Thanks. I'll keep that. Never see it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, the funny thing is Paul Norman told him he should put it in a safe deposit box so it'll never get lost. Mm. Mm. And then the bank branch closed and he's never seen them. He's lost it. He can't get the negative back. Oh, really? Funny that. That's funny, isn't it? Wow. His negative is now missing. He's now missing. It's, it's not the government, it's the bank. Now, if you, if you have a look at the sun in this photo, you can find out, we know the date, the, the day of the year, the date and the time by the position of the sun. We can clock that as exactly uh, 6.45 p.m. So it's about 15 minutes before Fred flew over here. Mm. He went right over this beach, Fred did. Mm. And then he turned left to go down to King Island. King Island would be just off to the left of this photo. Mm. Right? Have you have you ever been down to the exact spot he took that photo? Not well. Not with that in mind. Um, yeah. When, when I was first dating the woman who's now my wife, uh, she was her grandparents went down here a lot in their holiday time. They was stayed at the same caravan park and they were somewhere along there. And I went down and visited her once. Uh, this was Crayfish Bay. 
I remember going to Crayfish Bay and catching up with uh, Bronwyn before we were um, before we were really an item, and I caught up with her down there. Um, so I have been down to this beach, but uh, I was aware even in those days. I knew about the case, but I wasn't looking for that at the time. Mm. No, but um, I once went uh, snorkeling around here with my brother-in-law. Um, and they were catching, my brother-in-law and his mate were catching crayfish. I just went for the swim and for the snorkeling in the ocean, which I hadn't done before. Um, and they, um, fisheries officers zoomed in on them and, and charged them because they were catching crayfish illegally. And they got, they got done. <laughs> oh, wow. Down at this same beach. It'd be, interesting, no. it'd be interesting to try and to try and shot match it up again. Like, you know, to stand there, and find uh, these rocks, and everything find well. these rocks. And I think mm. that at, off to the top right hand side there, that looks like a wave to me rather than rocks, but I could be wrong. It, it is a reef. It's a, it's a, rocky, is, that, is that another reef out, over there? It's is another it? rocky outcrop. It's, oh. there, it's a line of rocks. And there's yeah. another one further back. Quite mm. a lot of rocky things out there. Mm. Yeah. Because it almost <laughs> is a very testable environment that, particular photo i'm not going to say that you're going to reproduce the, what, what's in that picture but but um it'd be interesting to go down there and and, and try to to shot to just mm. as a as a as a, uh, a method of investigation i suppose to is to is to recreate it to check it out yeah, yeah to check even, it out you might even yeah. be able to find an image of that on the internet somewhere too Mm. Yeah, <laughs> someone, someone, someone may have done it, but but I've not heard of it. That's the you know well, that's the interesting thing. It's just the Melbourne side mm. of um, of Cape Otway where the lighthouse mm. is. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, about a one or two k's towards Melbourne from the lighthouse. Mm. I was I was going to make a, just a couple of comments about some of the things you guys have said. For example, if that was one to two kilometres away, then that thing is really big. Um, and yep. the other thing is, Ben, you said something about the sound. Um, you possibly, if it was making any sort of like a low hum or anything like that, you possibly may not have heard it over the sound of the ocean. Mm, particular distance. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Okay. The, the series of six shots that he took were just normal photos, just like that, but without that object. Mm. But one of the other photos had kind of a disturbance in the water where those rocks are that you were talking about, Ben, those rocks yep. further away there in the background sort of thing. Yep. Um, yep. It was kind of like a wave had splashed up on a rock, like there was a, like a disturbance in the water there. Mm. Um, in one of the earlier photos, in photo number four, I think, photo three or four all the others were unremarkable and the last one was unremarkable but this was number five this, mm. the image here was number five the one before it had this disturbance in the water right. and one two and three were just normal pictures but That's um weird. yeah it's a fascinating case it is I've, I've been writing a book about the vintage case for about four years and okay. i'm very very close to winding it up and I'll, I'll, so i can publish it Publishers, traditional publishers don't want to know about it, of course. So I'll just publish it on Amazon mm. and everybody will buy it. It'll be really cheap. You know, it'll be 10 bucks or something, but it'll have <laughs> everything that I know about the case. And what I'm trying to do is set the record straight and to cut out the crap. I'm trying to stop people from, they keep attacking Fred and saying it's his own fault because yeah. he was they're saying he was an incompetent pilot. And, uh, and some say, oh, he wanted to suicide. He wanted to disappear. All of this rubbish, you know. Mm. Um, Philip Klass, the great sceptic from years ago, actually accused Guido of plotting with his son to steal the aircraft. <laughs> Come on. So unlikely. Yeah, no. Oh. If, you, if you know, um, you know, oh. anything about the Valentich family, that's just not possible. And, and where are you going to hide an aeroplane? Mm. Yeah. You know? What are you going to do with it? Where are you going to hide it? What are you going to yeah. do? Sell it on the black market? Yeah, exactly. That's ridiculous. You know? <laughs> well, I look forward to that, George. That oh, yeah. good, good. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I've enjoyed writing it. It's taken a long time and you rewrite and rewrite it. There's so many weird things about the case. Mm. Um, like uh, now I'm getting clouded out by the budgie's claw. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about that. He's sitting right on the... Every time you say Fred, he probably thinks you're talking about yeah. Fred. Yeah, that's funny. That yeah, but um, 
the thing was, there's so many funny things that have happened with this case, you know, all these other things, that have, all the other reports that come in, and you have to investigate them, mm. no matter how bizarre they are, and, uh, or, and you can't always get anywhere because you don't always have enough information mm. to go on. So I just wanted to put it all down in the book. Mm. And, um, right. Yeah. But the thing is, see, now, Dick Haynes, Dr. Haynes of NASA, wrote a book about the Vletich case called Melbourne Episode, Case Study of a Missing Pilot. And he said, in his opinion, on page, I think it's page 196 of his book, he says he thinks that that image in the photo was somehow added later to the photo. He doesn't think it's a genuine picture. He doesn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, go to Kodak and try to get them to analyze the negative before it disappeared. Mm. See, Haynes could say anything he likes, but he doesn't know. Um, and and the, uh, there was a, one of the documentaries that they made about the Valentis case, um, the National Geographic. They had an expert. So we've got to believe the experts, don't we? And the expert said, oh, look, the plane's gone into the sea and disappeared. The, the sea swallows up aircraft all the time. Mm. Well, no wreckage was ever found. You crash mm. a you crash a plane into. Oh, how come? At the time that Fred disappeared, he had just reported he was at four and a half thousand feet mm. above the sea. He didn't have time to get down to the sea level because mm. he went. He stopped replying mm. while he was at four and a half thousand feet. Mm. You know, yeah. so. The stories never never add up. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. I I, no. I, I couldn't agree more. And the object that he says it's not an aircraft, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. For those who are just sort of missing some pieces of the story, Frederick mm. Valentich encountered a UFO while flying. Mm. So yeah. yeah mm. But that that's a groundbreaking story because pilots normally don't talk about UFO encounters at all. Mm. If they see one, they'll shut up about it. They don't want to lose their jobs. Mm. And he didn't say it was a UFO, by the way. No, I know. Yeah. And he asked questions. He said, is there any, do you have any traffic below 5,000? Mm. I said, no. He said, well, I have, seems to be an, an object below, five, you know, an aircraft below 5,000 feet. He said, no, uh, it seems to be four, four bright landing lights and... A lot of details he goes into at various times. Mm. Uh, and he asks several times, are you sure there isn't any strange military aircraft in this area? And he keeps being told, no, there's no aircraft in that area. Mm. And it's manoeuvring so quickly um, that he can't even identify it. He says, um, mm. as it flies past, it's a long shape, cannot identify more than that. It has mm. such speed. Mm. At that time, like, like I, I believe that, that that Roy's photo is 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 good supportive evidence of of something that happened on a very strange day yeah. in Victorian UFO history. So if it was just if it was just the Fred Valentich thing on the same day, you could say, okay, well that's one thing. But you've also got this this extremely unusual photo that you've shared with us tonight with us today, mm. and it's and it and you look at it and everything you say about it is is one hundred percent spot on. Um, that really does back that up. And the other thing too is that at that time there were all sorts of objects being reported up and down the um, that coast of Victoria. There were all sorts of shapes and sizes. It was almost like a dimension had opened up, and these things had just all came out on mass. Yeah, we, we even had a coast guard guy, yeah, uh, who, ga who gave who, who came and spoke about what he saw mm. that evening. They were doing an exercise in the middle of Port Phillip Bay, and they saw this very strange thing. Mm. Um, <laughs> fly across the sky in the middle at eight o'clock at night. So after this, mm. you know, he was a coast guard, and they were doing serious, you know, um, serious exercises um, out in the middle of Port Phillip Bay. So they mm. they noticed something odd in the sky. Yeah, um, there was that guy Mark Laney who was playing um, playing tennis uh, in Corio. Mm -hmm. Yep. And saw this weird thing go over, you know, and um, there was a lot of reports that day for all around Melbourne, as you said, Ben, a lot of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, and even there were sea reports as well. I heard heard stories of the, uh, was it, I'm sure it was the Abel Tasman back then, but there were, they, they had sightings on or around the Abel Tasman 
as well. Yeah. So and also all around King Island, there was a couple yeah. um, that had gone off to spend a little bit of cuddly time together away from everyone in their car. They went down to this secluded little track on the beach and they saw this weird thing in the sky and they were so frightened by it, they, they left it. They, they drove away from the area because this thing was hanging around their car and it frightened them. Mm, mm. And, and it was a strange object flying around. So you'll be expanding on all this in your book, George? Um, well, yeah, I've, I've done as much as I think everything that I know about the case I've been yeah. able to put in. Yeah. Um, but something, other things keep coming up. Mm. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is, look, we're, in the 70s, one of my neighbours, um, he was a, quite a few years older than me, uh, and he was going to uni. I was going to high school. He was going to uni. And he had been at the high school that I went to. Um, and he was so much older that he could ride a motorbike to school because he was a returning mature age student, right? So legendary, you know, having a student at your school that rode a motorbike to school was <laughs> we were all riding bicycles. But anyway, um, he had these wild parties at his home on weekends because he had all these uni friends come over and they all had these amazing motorbikes in the front yard one of these guys rode a Norton Commando uh, and a lot of my friends were right into motorbikes and I took a photo of this this guy Lionel and he's I took photos of his motorbike his Norton Commando everybody just dreamed motorcycle you know in, in, the, in the 70s and uh, this guy Lionel just happens to be the son of a doctor who had his his clinic in Bar Morris where I lived and this doctor is the guy who owned an aircraft called VHDSJ. <laughs> wow. So I, I, used, I know this, I've met the son of the guy that owned the plane that disappeared. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's incredible, isn't it? That's yeah. crazy. But also yeah. another friend of mine um, was learning to fly and used to hire aircraft and, and, and get their hours up, you know, like they do. This friend of mine called Tim O'Brien used to, was a friend of a friend from school and he used to hire planes. He used to, he once hired DSJ and flew down to Tassie with my sister on board. And she borrowed my camera and took it on that plane, which later <laughs> disappeared when Fred was flying. A lot of connections. Just ridiculous. Yeah. And, and the other just interesting thing, because we're probably coming to a close yeah. shortly, um, is that, Fred's girlfriend Rhonda Rushton was meant to go with him on that flight. Hmm. That was that was the her intention had been to join him on that flight, but she, due to she, yeah, it didn't work out that way. So there could she have been often, two people. She often flew with him. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's interesting that the Steve Roby keeps saying, um, "I think he encountered a UFO." Mm. That's a direct quote from Steve. Yeah, he's been asked so many times, "What do you think happened to Fred?" <laughs> He encountered something he couldn't identify. One of the things they get wrong in all the documentaries, um, Fred's actual words were, um, it's flying over me at two, three times at a time at speeds I cannot identify. Now, just try unpacking that for a minute. What the heck does that mean? Mm. It's flying mm. over me at two to three times at a time mm. at speeds I cannot identify. That's... Mm. That's something unusual. Mm. Does that suggest it's darting back and forth? Like, you know, it's no. flying over me two or three times? Yeah. Or if, if, it ha if it was like a helicopter with a rotor going around two or three times at a time, you know, something's going pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, and he said, look, it's, it's passed over me at least a thousand feet above. Uh, it's vanished. Uh, yeah. It's now approaching from, the, from this direction or that direction. This thing was doing some pretty weird stuff. Mm. Um, and, and he, he didn't see it seem all that upset or anything. He's just wondering what it was. Mm. And are you, he said, are you sure there um, are there certain military aircraft? He thought it, to be going that quick and doing that much, it must have been some kind of military thing. There's no, no, no known aircraft in your vicinity. So, but, but, but even like a modern day Raptor wouldn't wouldn't shoot past you like you could see what that was you know you 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 know like it would 
you know, you'd see that that was a jet, I would have thought, you know. And that, that's today's planes, let alone, you know, back then it was F-111s and, you know, the Mirages and that sort of stuff. Mm. One of the Westall witnesses said she'd been to air shows and she'd seen jets flying around going very, very quickly and doing manoeuvres, aerobatic tricks above the crowd, you know. Mm. She said, but the, the noise was ear-splitting. Yeah. And yeah. the thing that happened that flew over Westall made no sound. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Roy took this photo and he didn't hear anything. Mm. No, well, George, thanks for sharing yeah. those two iconic Photo. Well, firstly, the Flintage one's definitely the Roy Manifold one's iconic, and the yeah. and the other one is very very strong as well. Um, and people who hasn't been out there very much, so yeah. it's just uh, weird it's opportunity to see it. Yeah, it's yeah. just weird. It's weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, weird thanks stuff. thanks yeah. for sharing those um those yeah, pictures with us. And we'd love to have you back after you you have your book published and talk. Yeah, more. great. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People could read the book. And then attack me for it online, and we'll talk about it. Hey, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, That's something to look forward to. Yeah. Right. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us uh, in this episode. And if you like enjoyed this episode, please like it and um, remember to subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And um, we look forward to seeing you next time. See Bye. you next time. Bye. Cheers. Bye.